Hey guys, for today's tips and tricks video, I wanted to talk about when not to push as a CT. So using Dust2 as an example, I want to use, I want to tell you the guidelines that I use, the rules of thumb that I like to use when not to push as a CT. So the first case would be if you have a man advantage, you do not need to push as a CT. You have that advantage, you want to maintain that advantage. If you push, you're giving your, you're exposing yourself and putting yourself at risk so that the enemy can equalize the round and make it a four versus four. You do not want to give the terrorist an opportunity to equalize the round and get a free pick off on you because you're taking an engagement that you don't need to be taking. If you have a five versus four, it's that much easier to hold all your bomb sites. If you can win in a five versus five by you know two or three people holding a bomb site, you should be able to do it in a five versus four. The other guideline or rule of thumb that I like to use is if you are stacked on a bomb set, let's say you have two players playing along a retake and three players towards B, you do not want to push at A, you will only want to push at B because you can afford to lose a player at B. You have multiple people there where if you die on the push, you can get a trade kill, you can maintain map control, or you can get information, you can push and flank through. At A, you can't really afford to do that. If you lose a player, it's really bad, especially because the nearest rotation is on the other side of the map. So I'm going to use a, a situation that happened at RGN land within the last couple of weeks. C2K and I were playing towards long A, and the rest of the team was playing towards B, whether it's in B or just outside of B spotting for mid. On this round in particular, Mo got an opening pick. It was a 5 versus 4. Stewie 2 k and I were playing a long A retake, where we had just hold long together, stop a rush, and we'd spot for cat, and if the enemy did come up cat to plant the bomb, we would control long, we'd hold it, isolate it, wait for our teammates to rotate through CT, and then we'd flash over like this, and then come over together and retake the bomb site, knowing that the remaining enemies would be in this area here by the brick or behind quad box. We funnel them into those areas. So on this round in specific, Mo got an opening pick making it a five versus four. Fairly early into the round, within 15, 20 seconds. Right there, that's our tell. None of us need to push at all. We should be winning this round more times than not. There's no reason that we need to push, especially at A, because we have three players towards B. Without saying anything, Stewie2K pushed through long doors and died to a player who was outside long. Someone just holding long for a push. We gave the push, we died. Sui TK lost his life, but more than that, it put me in a really bad position because now I'm open to long and short, but I don't have any teammates to assist me. I have just the utility that I have in my pocket, my smoke and my flashes, and my teammates aren't anywhere close to me so that I can't get a trade kill. There's nothing I can do. So those are two things that we had that should tell us not to push. But we did. One, Mo got the opening pick, five versus four, don't need to push. Two, with three players towards B, we do not need to push A. If we push anywhere, it's gonna be a B push. So those two things were two strikes that we did that cost us the round. If, let's say, Mo doesn't get the pick, it's still not a good idea to push through long A. We have three players towards B. In this situation, it's better to push through B tunnels if we need to get information, if the enemy's not really giving us much info at all, then we'd push in here maybe to get information, push to T-spawn to get a flank, leave one person here and have you rotate towards A or middle, um, push all the way through and flank them, just anything of that sort. Whatever you do, it's situationally based, where if we push into tunnels, we'll play it by ear type of thing. But you can sacrifice a player pushing into tunnels for information and better positioning because you have multiple people here to ensure a trade kill for starters but also if this player let's say there's only two people at b side and three people towards a and you do a b push like this and you go one for one trade this player is by himself to hold for an upper b push and mid to b both at the same time and it's a really difficult situation for him to be in but with three people here Two people can push up our tunnels and try to get that pick and get that information, flank off, and one person can be holding and spotting mid at the same time. So even if you lose a player, you still have two people towards B. So those are the two guidelines that I can really stress. If you have a man advantage, you want to keep it. You do not want to give an engagement where you can lose that advantage. And the other is you don't want to push on the side is that's unstacked if you are playing three people or four people in one area. 
you do not want to push the area that you have one or two people. You only want to push if you have the numbers. Anyways, I hope this video helped, and if it did, remember to, sub to subscribe. All right, peace.